Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the LSAT light machine gun. The gameplay that you're going to get to see is me using a very unusual class, and it's going to look crazy, but I promise you it works, and I'll explain to you why it works later. The gameplay will be a little bit sporadic. Some moments may be a little bit boring, a little bit slow-paced or campy, and then in other parts, I go on absolute tears and demolish people like I really shouldn't be doing with this weapon. But that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about the damage first. Unfortunately, this is a very low damage light machine machine gun dealing 38 damage per shot in close quarters combat and dropping off to 20 at a distance. What this is going to mean for you is that it's going to kill in between 3 and 5 shots, just kind of depending on how far away you are. Realistically speaking, the 5 shot kill range is pretty far out there, but you may experience it if you use something like a silencer or if you really try to do some long range combat. Headshots will deal 1.56x damage or 56% bonus damage, however you want to look at that, so that you'll get one less shot to kill depending on your range. And speaking of the range component, one important thing to note is that the three shot kill range is only 28 meters this is a very low range there are some assault rifles that do better than this marksman rifles do better than this for a light machine gun that is not very impressive range at this point in the in-depth episode, we've already established that the LSAT has low range and low damage, so why would we not just crumple this gun up and throw it in the garbage? Well, it's got some other excellent redeeming attributes, one of which is that it has a very high rate of fire at 800 RPM. The in-game tooltip may tell you that that's the fastest RPM in light machine guns. That's incorrect. The chainsaw actually shoots a little bit faster, but it is a very high rate of fire, and it's the highest rate of fire amongst what we'll call the normal light machine guns. Because of this fast rate of fire and the fact that close quarters damage is relatively the same as the others, it has a fast time to kill at close to medium range. It's definitely a fast time to kill up close. Medium range has a fast time to kill. Long range unfortunately drops down to near the worst for light machine guns at a very slow time to kill, a lot of bullets to kill, and just is really not a long range weapon. This one is geared toward close to medium range combat, probably a little bit more toward medium than close, but it can also do close. When it comes to recoil, the recoil is moderate and not persistent. Size. It doesn't kick specifically to one side or the other, it wobbles back and forth a little bit, but it does generally drift up. However, I personally found it to be rather controllable. Statistically, numerically speaking, if you look at the, the plots online, it doesn't look too impressive, but for whatever reason out there in the universe, and this is a subjective part of in-depth, I did not have much difficulty controlling this one, and especially when I'm using it with rapid fire here, I usually aim somewhere a little bit low, like the groin region, and spray maybe a 10-20 round burst, and it kicks all the way up to the chest and the head, and I did not have an issue with it. Like all light machine guns, it has pretty terrible hipfire accuracy. There is really nothing good about this hipfire accuracy. The only thing worse is that of the sniper rifles. I ran steady aim on this class to tighten it up to make it a little bit more useful in close quarters combat. If you don't run steady aim, you probably won't be able to kill very much with the hipfire unless you're right in their face. However, with steady aim, it'll make it doable. It will make it good, it'll just make it possible to do if you need it. Aim down sights time very slow at 0.35 seconds or 350 milliseconds. This is the slowest in the game outside of sniper rifles, same as the speed as all the other light machine guns. Really not a fast ADS kind of weapon, not a fast like snapped aim down sights on the target weapon. It's more of a pre-fire, a pre-ADS, a lean around corner kind of weapon, yet I'm using it in close quarters combat, which I will explain later. Movement speed is unfortunately slow again, same as the other light machine guns with the exception of the chainsaw. It runs at 80% movement speed. This is going to make you the slowest player on any map, the same as even running around with the riot shield or the moss. The movement speed in this particular video is not representative of the movement speed of the LSAT because I'm running agility. I'm giving you all my perks and loadouts early, but I wanted to be a little bit faster, I didn't want to be slow with it, and agility will definitely help. One huge, and I do mean absolutely huge, drawback to this weapon is that it has the slowest reload time in the entire game. Nothing reloads slower than the LSAT. Even if you do a full reload cancel, it still takes 6 seconds to reload, which is brutal. It is so slow and so painful and so so bad. Please be careful and be somewhere safe when you're reloading. And that's also one of the reasons I'm running the shotgun attachment on this one so that I have something to work with while I'm reloading. If you're not running rapid fire, I'm running rapid fire here. You won't have an issue with it because you have a 100 round magazine. However, with rapid fire, you may burn through that 100 rounds much faster than you think you would. So reloading is a crutch with this weapon and it makes you play very, very tactically. You have to be careful about it. Iron sights are good enough for me to use in the LSAT's optimal range. They're not the perfect iron sights, but they are among the better iron sights. Definitely the best in the light machine gun class as far as I'm concerned. And inside the range that I want to use this weapon, they work great. I don't really need optics at all. However, if I were to run optics, I would prefer to use the VMR or the thermal hybrid. Something with a long range and a short range component because I, I want to be close with this weapon, but I also want to have the ability to do long range combat. So something that will allow you to vary your ranges is going to be optimal. 
Wall penetration or any sort of object penetration, including bodies, is high, highest in the game, as good as it can get. I don't really need armor penetrating rounds or AP rounds because armor piercing. I always say armor penetrating, but it's armor piercing rounds. I don't really need it because it punches through walls good enough on its own. Statistically speaking, this is very similar to the chainsaw. It has a similar damage profile, a similar rate of fire, a similar range. The only thing that's different about it is instead of having awesome hip fire accuracy, you can actually aim down sights. So if you like the chainsaw but hate that weird sort of, you know, always hip fire thing. If you'd like a submachine gun, like the chainsaw, but the ability to aim down sights, then the LSAT is for you. Based on the stats, I believe that this is best used as a rushing or aggressive playstyle light machine gun. This is the light machine gun, with the exception of the chainsaw. If you want to rush, if you want to punish the middle range, if you want to get up in people's faces and spray and play aggressive and, you know, use stalker and move around corners, this is the best light machine gun for that, except for maybe the chainsaw. They're very similar, different flavors of LMG here, but this can be used as that sort of light machine gun. My class, if you haven't noticed, is highly, highly unusual for light machine guns, but it works. I promise you it works if you play close quarters combat and maybe a slightly more conservative close quarters combat because we don't have quick draw on this class. The best class for this weapon, I believe, and this is a crazy one, you want to use the undermount shotgun and rapid fire. Rapid fire is going to make your time to kill very fast up close. It's going to make your time to kill very fast at medium range and it's going to make it a little bit more competitive at long ranges. It also dumps out a lot of bullets which will make the steady aim more useful. I also run the undermount shotgun so that when people get close to me, instead of hip fire Firing them, I do have the option to just spam shotgun bullets in their face. It also allows me to have something to shoot when I do run out of bullets because I do that because of the rapid fire. Running ready up and agility makes sense. I want to run fast and I want to recover fast after sprinting to make the steady aim useful. Stalker and steady aim are my two aim assist components. I like stalker. I like being able to sidestep fast and poking in and around corners. It helps you a lot with this weapon. Pre ADSing is still going to be better than hip firing in most situations, so you will need to do that. Steady aim, of course, tightens up the hip fire and focus because, well, if you're not running focus, Focus, you're just going to lose like 90% of your gunfights. You need that. I ran assault streaks with this. I had no problems getting kills. I had no problems capturing flags. And assault streaks really worked. You've probably seen them a couple times in this episode of In Depth. I got dogs, helicopters, uh, anything. I probably could go for KEMs with this if I ran specialist. If I got something like stalker to refill my light, assault, uh, light machine gun ammunition, I could go really, really far. It's a fun class. It might take a little bit of practice, but, but I promise you it really, really can work. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous up episode that was an update on the SMG buffs, the next episode I gotta keep secret for a little bit. I'm working on a lot of stuff here. This is the end of the normal weapon reviews. I've covered every single weapon in the game, so I'm working on some other in depth cool kind of projects for now, and hopefully you like what I'm working on. But I gotta keep it secret. As always, if you enjoyed everything, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, and check out my sponsors in the description. Drifter out.